I know that I also have a tendency sometimes, especially when you're visiting at a parish and you don't often have a microphone <laughs> at your face, you know, you can go too long. So I'll give you my little GPS thing and you can kind of keep me on track, okay? I'm going to give the basic theme, then I'm going to apply that to fathers, and then I'm going to talk about God the Father, both in terms of creation, Christmas, the Last Supper, then I'll bring you back to the theme that I started at the very beginning and then I'll wrap it up, okay? So that's, that's the route I'm going to take. So you can be my GPS. At any moment, you can say, um, you have left the route. Do you want a correction here? Or you can ask me to make a next available legal U-turn and come back to where I was. But that's where I'm going to go. It is Father's Day. And what's a father to do? What's a father to be? There's the theme. To do for and to be with, that's a father. Now notice I did not say before, like a bingo card, before. I said to do for and to be with, that's what a father does. Oops, I forgot to add some there. I was going to tell you a little bit about my father. My dad, when I was a kid, I can remember um, not only not being embarrassed by my father's job, and notice I say job, not profession. I was not only embarrassed by my father's, I not only, I was embarrassed by my, what my dad did. My dad was a milkman. Back in the days when they had house-to-house -house delivery, some of you will remember that. Back in the old and older days when they used to put milk in bottles, in glass. My dad was a milkman. He went house-to-house. -house. And my friend's fathers went off to work at 9 o'clock wearing a tie. My dad left at 3 o'clock in the morning wearing a worker shirt that said Miller Dairy on it. And I can remember being a little embarrassed by that. That his job was not like the jobs that the rest of the dads had. It was later, it was later that it dawned on me what my father had done for us. See, here comes the before, to do for whoever's in your care. My father had not only that job, he always had a second job, I found out later. He had two jobs all the time we were growing up. Because my dad would sacrifice himself in whatever way he needed to sacrifice himself in order to do for the five of us. It was later that I started to realize that my father had put up with those rattling milk bottles behind him day after day after day after day for us. So that made it different. My father's profession eventually began to look a little different. And then it looked real different when I was in high school. I played tennis in high school. And my father, because he got up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he was finished at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Which means that my father could be in every one of my tennis matches all through my high school tennis play. There's the second part. To do for and to be with. And my father's being with me at every one of those tennis matches in high school helped me to understand what it was that he had done for me. So that's a good father. That's what we who bear the name of father are supposed to be doing, we're to do for the others, but more important to be with the others, so that eventually they'll catch on to figure out what it is that we have done for them. So far so good. God the Father. We call God our Father. Man, what a responsibility we have, and what an honor we have. To help to reveal who God is, to do for others what God would do for them, and to be for others what God would be for them, to reveal something of God to others. Wow, what a privilege. And what a responsibility that is to God the Father. To do for others, to do for us and to be with us. Wasn't that the moment of creation? God created everything that was, and He said it will be for you. And I will be with you. He wanted to walk with Adam and Eve in paradise. It was God's desire to do for humanity and to be with humanity. Except we humans, humanity, decided we'd rather do for ourselves. We'd rather be on our own. So eventually, God said, I must go among them myself. I must sacrifice my throne to be born in a stable. 
because I need to do for them and I need to be with them. Do you know what we call Jesus? One of his nicknames is Emmanuel, God with us. God realized that he needed to do for his people, but even more so, in order for them to understand what he was doing for them, he needed to be with them, so he came among us. Do you see the theme continuing here? To do for us and to be with us. And what did Jesus do? Jesus decided that he would be, give his everything. He would sacrifice everything about himself for us, to die for us on the cross. He would do for us. He would let the milk bottles rattle behind him. He would have the second job. He would be, Jesus said, he would be, he would be our Savior. He would do anything and everything for us. But then he realized he wanted to always be with us, because that was even more important. So at the night of the Last Supper, he said, this bread, it's me. This wine, it's me. As I have broken my own bones for you, as I have poured out my lifeblood for you, I will continue to be with you in that same way. And whenever I am with you, when you do that in memory of me, I, at that moment, will give myself over for you again. I will pour out my blood for you again, and I will be with you. Hence we come to the solemnity of the feast of the body and blood of Christ. What's God to do? That God is to be for us. And there I mix them together, didn't I? Jesus is to do for us, and Jesus is to be with us. We're back to where we started. What's the Father to do? The Father is to do for others. The Father is to be with others. And what's a God to do? The God is to do for us. The God is to be with us. And this feast of the body and blood of Christ, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, is evidence of that. In this Eucharist, God does for you. And in this Eucharist, God is with you. It's perfect. Let's stand now and we will pray.